You know, and she kept saying she didn't understand. And I told her, I says, what you're going to see now, I'm going to do to you. If you were to be released, <clears throat> you're back out into society, and would you think that it would be uh, no. you know what? I wouldn't advise anyone to, I mean, not unless, <laughs> not unless they want a line loose in the streets. Because you'd kill again? More than positive. Yeah. I just don't take well to, I don't like people crossing me, I don't like, I, I feel that Insubordination is punishable by death. I mean, I just, I, I just, I got crazy. I got different thoughts. I just don't. Um, I wouldn't let me go. What are your thoughts? What is it that that goes through your mind again and again and again? It's everything at once. Uh, you know, I used to just think that you know. I, I think of situations. Uh, you know, it's constantly things are going through my head. Uh, now I, 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 I think about other things. Uh, it's creation. I think of uh, how things were created, what people, what people are, what, what purposes are, what makes people think the way they are. I have so many thoughts that run. I, you know, uh, I, I call them, uh, I, I don't know what it is. Uh, I just, I, supreme being. I don't know. I, I just have things that I think about the universe, the universes, how we're here, how we possibly could be here. I just I've I've thought like this for a long time in my mm -hmm. life. I just I don't I don't think like normal people. Never have. And so you think you were probably born wired this way, with I, the racing thoughts and the. Well, I'd say this is that I know that there's. I was born this way, yes, and everybody's not born, I guess you could say, with the, uh, with the spirit of God in them. That's why I have this Bible verse on my eye, if you see it. It's, it states in that, in that verse that, and I didn't get it because I, I feel, I mean, I have, that I'm the antichrist. That, that it states in this verse, it says, and everyone that does not confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. If you notice, he says, this is the spirit. So that means that there's other things that are born without the spirit of God in them. A lot of people don't take that and see that. So if you're not born with the Spirit of God, if you're born with the Spirit of something else, then you're born, people, it's, then according to the Christian Bible, then you're not, everybody can't have the Spirit of God. And, I can remember back to when I was about four. When I was four, something happened to me with my mother. Uh -huh. And that's when I was introduced to sex. Uh -huh. Yeah. And when I started uh, doing the same thing with my younger sister, well, I told my mother, I said, I love my sister Jeannie more than sister and brother. Right? And, yeah. and she tried to convince me, no, it's not going to happen. You know, that's not right. So, yeah, that's when she take a butcher knife to you and grab a hold of it. And she says, if you don't behave yourself, I'll cut it off. You ever had thoughts that had to do with your mom? Because it would be understandable, wouldn't it? It would be understandable. Sure, it would. I mean, all yeah. she, what, what you thought. That thought, those thoughts were there. Yeah. What about with the girl a couple months later? Was there something similar 
uh, about that, or was that something that you had begun to think about? Well, I was by myself. Yeah. And she showed up by herself. She was on top of the bridge. She started talking. I said, what are you doing down here by yourself? You know? And I started walking upstream, right? And she comes up there with me. And she was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Right. Yeah. But there was a little bit of sexual stuff going on with her. Right. Yeah. I was thinking about my sister Jeannie back then. Yeah, OK. Let's say a little bit more about that. That's something I don't like to talk about. And as I went up the trail a little farther, I see smoke coming out of a, the last hut. And I get up there, and they got a good-sized log with steps on it. And I climb up on a log, and I look in, and here's a girl in there, and she's making booby traps with gunpowder. And I tied her hands up, led her up into the mountain, up on the other side, tied her to a teak tree. I took the body of the other woman, and I cut the leg off at the knee and at the thigh. And she kept saying she didn't understand. And I told her, I says, what you're going to see now, I'm going to do to you. Well, I'm not an expert. I'm not an authority. I'm someone who has been a murderer for almost 20 years. Can you say how many people might be doing crimes like you were doing? It would be a guess, but it's not. It's far more than 35. It isn't that impossible in this society. It happens. Are there more people? They didn't give up. Uh, how he, many? she didn't give up. I did. I came in out of the cold. And what I'm saying is there are some people who prefer it in the cold. Good people see. A nice guy. You were able to appear like an ordinary person, non-threatening to... I lived as an ordinary person most of my life, even though I was living a parallel and increasingly sick life, other life. One victim let me back in the car. I locked myself out. She opened the door for me. My gun was under the seat. What in the hell am I doing telling you that? Am I looking, am I, am I a masochist? Am I looking to be tormented further? I'm trying to show you just how awful this got, how commanding these rages got. I was raging inside. There was just incredible energies, positive and negative, uh, depending on a mood that would trigger one or the other. And outside, I looked troubled at times. Other times I looked moody. Uh, other times perfectly serene. Not very sane. But again, people weren't even aware of what was happening. You were involved in the campus because your mother worked there? Yes. I was also involved in killing co-eds because my mother was associated with college work, college co-eds, women and had had a very strong and violently outspoken position on men for much of my upbringing. My mother was a, a sick, angry, hungry, and very sad woman. I hated her, but I wanted to love my mother. And I watched the alcohol increase. I watched her social life drop off. I watched her get bizarre. She had terrible pain from her life earlier life, her upbringing, uh, a failed marriage with my father. I'm a constant reminder of that failure. I hate to distill it down into such uh, into one word realities like that. There's a lot that leads into that happening, but that is what happened. They represented not what my mother was, but what she liked, what she coveted, what was important to her, and I was destroying it. Why did you actually kill the girls? My frustration. My inability to communicate socially, sexually, I wasn't impotent, but emotionally I was impotent. I was scared to death of failing in male-female relationships. I knew absolutely nothing about that whole area. Even if just sitting down and talking with the young lady, I 
need to be able to really communicate. And ironically enough, that's why I began picking people up. And I'm picking up young women. And I'm going a little bit farther each time. It's a daring kind of a thing. At first, there wasn't a gun. I'm driving along. We go to a vulnerable place where there aren't people watching, where I could act out. And I say, no, I can't. And then a gun is in the car, hidden. And this craving, this awful, raging, eating feeling inside. I could feel it consuming my insides, this fantastic passion. Uh, it was overwhelming me, already realizing if that gun comes out, something has to happen. It was going to happen. I didn't see it then, but it was going to happen. I was playing a dangerous game with a loaded gun that got us all. It had to stop. Uh, once my mother was dead, there was an, almost a cathartic process at that point. I got physically ill right then when she died, when I murdered her. And once she was dead, there was no way I could back out. I had backed down from giving up a thousand times. You know, I just used to get drunk and go sit out in front of the sheriff's department in a parking lot across the street on one of those little concrete parking berms, and I just sit there and say, no, I still can't. The clanging doors, I can still hear them. No, because it'll never open again. You know? So I, I, I uh, rationalized that to give up would be insane. To give up would be crazy. I'd be giving away my freedom, and I don't need to. But I look back on that and wish I had earlier when I was saying those things to myself people who were later dead wouldn't be. The regret that came later would have not had to be. Those people, not things, those people would still be with their families, with their loved ones. They would have their own families. If I had had the courage to make that decision, instead of painting myself into the corner. Where might you be if you'd never given in to the impulse to murder? Where might I be? If my parole had been successful, um, I believe I'd be married, I'd have children, I'd be heading toward my first grandchildren. 